UFC 300 just happened, and today I'm going to give you the fights to make for the big winners and losers of the UFC's biggest event of all time. Stick around to hear my fights to make after UFC 300. I'm Wyatt, and this is Fight Society. So first off, we have the main event, and that was Alex Pereira defeating Jamal Hill by first round KO in one of the more impressive performances of his career and of the night. Obviously, Max Holloway stole the show with his knockout of Justin Gaethje, but Alex Pereira put on a performance for the ages with a easy win against Jamal Hill at UFC 300. So my first fight to make after UFC 300 is Alex Pereira against former champion Yuri Prohaska, who won on the prelims. Now, I know that Magomed Ankalaev has been said to be the number one contender for Alex Pereira's belt. There was talk of it happening at 301 if Alex Pereira came out of this fight with no problems, but I don't think he's going to fight at 300. He said that he has a broken toe, or Dana says that he has a broken toe. Yuri Prohaska had a huge, bonus-worthy, impressive win when he KO'd Alexander Rakic in the second round of their fight on the same event. So from a timeline standpoint and from a star power standpoint, this is the best decision that the UFC can make, in my opinion. Even though Magomed Ankalaev is on a win streak, or I guess because he had a draw with Jan Blahovic, he's on a unbeaten streak, not an undefeated win streak. But Yuri Prohaska is the bigger star. And if we're talking business decisions, Yuri Prohaska versus Alex Pereira 2 is the fight to make. And I think that that would mean that Magomed Ankalaev should rematch Jan Blahovic or something like that. Because you'll see what I have for Jamal Hill later in the card. And then for the co main event, we have Weili Zhang defeating Yan Nan by decision. And I talked about this on my stream on Sunday that this was atrocious commentary and refereeing. Weili Zhang won this fight three times. She won by submission at the end of the first. Yan Nan got saved by the bell when she shouldn't have been allowed to. Jason Herzog should have stopped the fight in the second round with a TKO when Weili Zhang had, had her flattened out pounding her out. That should have been a TKO. And then she won by decision. So Weili Zhang once again proves herself as the best straw weight in the UFC, bar none. And she needs a test. Obviously, 125 would be a possibility for her. I think she could compete with Grasso or Shevchenko. But with them doing the ultimate fighter and that fight looking to not happen until UFC 306 at the Sphere, it looks like there's going to be quite a bit of time until that until the 125 division sorts itself out. And you also have Man and Fior waiting for a title shot as well. So I think that for the time being, Weili Zhang is going to remain at straw weight. And I think that she should get paired up with undefeated number two ranked prospect, Tatiana Suarez. I know she hasn't been incredibly active. I know that she deals with tons of injuries, but she's ran through everybody that she has fought at 115. Despite the injuries, she's still young. She has obliterated everybody at 115. I think that Weili Zhang versus Tatiana Suarez is the matchup to make. This will give Weili a matchup against somebody that's a little bit bigger for that weight class that has very good grappling prowess. And I think that this would be a tough test for Weili Zhang. And I think that this is the fight to make. Moving down the card from there, we have Max Holloway, who defeated Justin Gaethje by KO with one second left in the fight. This was knockout of the year, maybe fight of the year. And this was the big moment of the night. This stole the show for the rest of the night. I actually, I was surprised at that, obviously, the final 10 seconds throwdown that Max initiated in being up four rounds to zero in my book. And this stole the show. This was the moment of the entire card. This was the UFC 300 holy shit moment. Now, I don't think that he's ever going to go back down to 145, even though he called out Ilya. I don't think he's going to go back down to 145 ever. I think that 
Ilya Taporia is going to rematch Volkanovsky sometime later this year. And I think that Islam is pretty booked up in terms of 155 title shots. He's going to fight Dustin Poirier at 302 in June. And then the winner of that fight is almost for sure going to fight Armin Sarukian in Abu Dhabi in October, which I think is UFC 308. And unless Max wants to wait out until 2025 for a title shot, he needs to find something else to do. And I think that with the announcement of Connor versus Chandler for 303, I think Connor's going to win that fight. My early prediction is that Connor's going to win that fight. And I think that the biggest fight that Max Holloway could make right now, a fantastic business decision for the UFC, is going to be after he beats Michael Chandler, Connor McGregor versus Max Holloway for the BMF belt. Connor could potentially get a 155 title shot if Dustin beats Islam Makachev. I could see them doing that fight. But Connor has shown a big interest in the BMF belt. And th this being a rematch of the, from their featherweight days, I think that this is the biggest fight that the UFC can put on for Max Holloway and for Connor McGregor. I think that. Max Holloway does not want to sit out until next year. He just became an even bigger star. He's one of the biggest stars in the sport. He just had the biggest moment on the biggest card in history, and they need to pay him back with this. A Conor McGregor fight for the BMF title. Red panty night for Max Holloway and the BMF, a chance at another belt for Conor McGregor coming off of what I think is going to be a win over Michael Chandler. Now, moving down the card from there, Armin Sarukian defeated Charles Oliveira by unanimous decision, or I'm sorry, split decision. And I do, honestly, Armin won that fight. He did more damage. Charles got close with a couple of sub attempts, especially that first round guillotine. Armin Sarukian won that fight fair and square, two rounds to one, in my opinion. And... He deserves a title shot. And so what I think is next for Armin Sarukian, let me move myself over. What I think is next for Armin Sarukian is the winner of Islam and Dustin in June. I think the winner of that fight will fight Armin Sarukian in the Abu Dhabi October pay-per-view later this year. Armin Sarukian has beat the star that he needed to get over with the fans, have a big name on his resume, and he's already fought Islam Makachev, gave Islam Makachev arguably his toughest test before the first Volkanovsky fight. Armin deserves a, deserves a title shot. I don't think that they're going to give it to anybody else. I don't think that, obviously, Max Holloway is not going to want to wait out even longer. I think they're going to pick Armin Sarukian and do a BMF fight for Max Holloway. So Armin Sarukian versus the winner of Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier. I assume that fight would be in October in Abu Dhabi. Moving down the card from there, Bo Nickel, he beat Cody Brundage by second round sub. In my opinion, he did not look great in comparison to the expectations that the UFC and the fans had for him. For being a plus 1,000 underdog, Cody Brundage actually gave him a very competitive fight. And I think that Bo Nickel needs a ranked opponent. We need to see if he's for real. He did still get a finish against a subpar opponent for the main card of UFC 300 and Cody Brundage. And so I think <clears throat> that Bo Nickel should fight the loser of... Roman Delizze and and Anthony Hernandez, who are fighting on UFC 302 in June. So it's only about seven weeks away, and I think that Bo Nickel versus the loser of this fight makes perfect sense. These guys are both ranked in that 10 to 15 range at middleweight, and if they're coming off of a loss, they probably would need to defend their slot against a lower-ranked guy or an unranked guy. They're both much better grapplers than Cody Brundage. They're both, both much better strikers than Cody Brundage. This is Bo Nickel's chance to prove that he belongs at middleweight. Bo Nickel versus the loser of Roman Delidze and Anthony Hernandez later this year, maybe in the Sphere, maybe in Madison Square Garden in November, something that is a big card slot in a big moment against a tough opponent. That's what I think Bo Nickel should do. Moving on from there, we have the big fight losers of the card. Jamal Hill, first off, he lost in the main event, first round KO against Alex Pereira. 
Really didn't do much. Landed a few leg kicks, kicked Alex Pereira in the cup, and then got KO'd. Tough comeback fight after being out for over a year. But, you know, he stepped up against Alex Pereira. I think that his Achilles was probably rushed for the sake of getting in there for UFC 300. I think that they really wanted to do this fight at UFC 301 in Brazil, but we ended up getting it as the 300 main event. And Jamal Hill, you know, he went in there on six weeks notice against the toughest light heavyweight in the world, and he got caught by the hardest hitter in the world. So it is what it is. Jamal Hill does not lose any stock from that loss. And I think that he deserves another big fight, a pay-per-view main card or a fight night main event. And I think that he should fight someone that also lost on this card. And that is Alexander Rakic, who lost to Yuri Prohaska on the featured prelim of this card. Like I said earlier, I think that Yuri Prohaska deserves a title shot in terms of business, star power. Yuri versus Pereira 2 is the next fight that I want to see for the light heavyweight title. Jamal Hill versus Alexander Rakic could maybe even be on the same card. Or they put Magomed Ankalaev and Jan Blahovich on the same card as Pereira and Prohaska. The next fight for Jamal Hill, I think, should be Alexander Rakic, a top five matchup against someone that was on the same card. The timelines match up, and I think that this is a really good fight between two hard hitting strikers. Now, the loser of the co main event, Yan Xiaonan, she lost three times in this fight, like I said earlier in this video and on my stream the other day. She did get completely outclassed while showing grit against Wei Li Zhang. And I think that given her coming off of this loss, she needs to fight down in the rankings. And I think that she should fight in a number one contenders fight to see who would fight the winner of what I think should be Wei Li and Tatiana Suarez. I think that she should fight Jessica Andrade, who got a win on this same card. They've already fought before. It was an exciting fight. I think that they should run it back to see who gets a, who gets a crack at the strawweight belt after Wei Li fights Tatiana Suarez. Moving down from there, we have Charles Oliveira, who lost to Armin Sarukian, almost won by first round guillotine. I think that he needs multiple wins to get back into the title shot or into a title picture. And I don't think that one win is going to get him a, a title shot anymore. The Armin Sarukian win would have done it for him. Now, I think that the fight to make for Charles Oliveira is someone who also lost on this card, and that is Justin Gaethje rematch. I think that Charles Oliveira and Justin Gaethje should fight each other again. They had a super entertaining fight when they fought for Charles Oliveira's title defense that ended up being where he got stripped and i think that these guys could be in a fight night main event somewhere in with a crowd with a big crowd big city or they could go on a big pay-per-view as a co-main event both of these guys are coming off of losses i was thinking justin gaethje was going to retire after the loss because he has said that he wants the belt a fight against each other a win over one another charles Oliveira beating justin gaethje or vice versa would be very impressive towards pushing one of them back towards a title shot and pushing the other one, honestly, out of title contention and towards the end of their careers. Both of these guys have been there, done that. There's not a whole lot much left to achieve unless you're Justin Gaethje wanting an undisputed title. This is the fight to make for me for both Charles Oliveira and Justin Gaethje. Now, here we have the prelim winners from UFC 300, aside from Yuri, I already included Yuri, but the prelim winners from UFC 300. First, we have Aljamain Sterling beat Calvin Cater by dominant unanimous decision. It wasn't the most fan-friendly fight, but moving up a weight class, he looked fantastic. Aljo should have been at 45 his entire career. He's strong, he's fast, cutting less weight so he's gonna have a better chin. I think that <clears throat> we should get the battle of advanced grapplers, and we have Aljamain Sterling versus Brian Ortega. In my opinion, Max Holloway is never going to be a featherweight ever again. I think Max Holloway is going to get BMF title fights and a 155 title shot, and I think that Volk and Taporia are going to rematch sometime later this year, and then so both of these guys... They both need opponents. They're both close to title shots. I think this could be a number one contenders fight to see who fights the winner of Vulcan Taporia. So this is what I think 
elite grappling. It won't be the most fan friendly fight for people that like striking, but it could be a fight night main event, or it could be on the same card as Vulcan Taporia later in the year, or maybe Brian Ortega with him being in this fight, Brian Ortega, they could put this on the fight in the sphere in September for Mexican independence day. And yeah, that's what I think they should do with Aljo and Brian Ortega for Kayla Harrison. She beat Holly Holm by second round submission. Fantastic performance. She looked strong. Her striking definitely leaves some to be desired, but she is elite. She did prove that. She absolutely smoked Holly Holm. And I think that she should get a title shot off of that win. Now, I do believe that Raquel Pennington and Juliana Pena are going to fight for the belt at some point this year. And I think that Kayla Harrison should get the winner of that. Or if they decide to not go with Juliana Pena for a title shot, I think that they should go with Kayla Harrison versus Raquel Pennington. But regardless of that, Kayla Harrison, big weight cut for her to make 135. I don't think she's going to be somebody that fights three times a year. Maybe she wants to sit out till the end of the year anyway. But regardless of that, whether it's the next title fight or it's against the winner of Juliana Pena and Raquel Pennington, I think that Kayla Harrison's next fight is going to be for the belt. Now, here we have Diego Lopes absolutely steamrolled Sadiq Youssef in the first round, star-making performance on UFC 300. He called out Movsar of Loyev. I think that that's the fight to make for Diego Lopes is against Movsar. Diego Lopes's UFC debut was on like five days notice against Movsar. He lost a very competitive decision and Diego Lopes is proving himself to be a star. This is a perfect chance for him to get back his one loss in the UFC. And honestly, I know the UFC does not want Movsar Yevloyev to be a champion, to be in the title picture. A few weeks ago when I did matchmaking for 145 pounds after the uh, UFC Mexico City card, I said Brian Ortega versus Movsar, but I think that they should do Aljo versus Brian Ortega and then allow Diego Lopes to run it back with Movsar Yevloyev. And in hopes that Diego Lopes can make himself a top five featherweight and that they could, in the UFC's hopes, can knock Movsar out of the title picture for the time being because they definitely don't want him fighting for a belt. He's got a boring, non fan friendly style. This is their chance to have. Diego Lopes get a full training camp and fight against Movsar and kill two birds with one stone by knocking off Movsar. Alrighty, now next up, Hanato Moicano. He beat Jalen Turner on the pre early prelims, actually. And I said this on my stream the other day. Jalen Turner sucks. He 14 and 8. He's a 6'3 lightweight and he can't get people out of there. He dropped Moicano in the first round, and he almost finished him with that front kick to the body in the first, like, 20 seconds. Jalen Turner's soft. Moicano is super tough. He powered through getting absolutely demolished in the first round, almost finished with a body kick, dropped with a big cross from Jalen Turner, comes back, gets the takedown, and I thought he was going to submit him, but that was my pick as well, was submitting Jalen Turner. But he ended up TKOing because Jalen Turner quit in that fight. Money Moicano deserves a fight night main event, and I think that he deserves that against. And I don't think he's going to fight super high up in the rankings because lightweight is pretty packed right now. I think that he deserves a fight night main event against Benoit Saint-Denis. Someone else that favors the grappling much more We've seen both of these guys get hurt badly on the feet. Benoit Saint-Denis was KO'd by Dustin Poirier after dominating the first round with grappling. We've seen Moicano get hurt on the feet plenty of times. He got viciously KO'd by Rafael Fazeev, and he was hurt very badly by Jalen Turner in this fight. Both of these guys are a little bit lacking in the striking, but very, very competent in the grappling. This is a great stylistic matchup for both of these guys, and I think that they deserve a fight night main event. I think that Benoit Saint-Denis is a big enough star to main event Paris. Um, I don't think that Surreal Ghan is going to be held out till September when they do Paris. So I could see Benoit Saint-Denis versus Hanato Moicano being a fight night main event in Paris in September. But if they don't want to wait another five months for that, I could see them doing an Apex fight night or it's just somewhere else other than 
uh, pay-per-view. It could be a pay-per-view main card, but I think Paris Fight Night main event September main event Moicano versus Benoit Saint Denis. Great matchup between two grapplers. Great stylistic matchup for the both of them. Now Bobby Green put on a fantastic showing. He beat Jim Miller badly. Beat the shit out of Jim Miller, who had who was looking great going into that fight. But it just shows you how much your competition plays in. Jim Miller had been beating people like Butler and uh, Chris, oh, what was his name? Gabriel Benitez. And so the difference in competition between Bobby Green and Jim Miller shows just how important it is to be fighting high level competition and how much that can do for you, even in losses like Bobby Green. He lost to Islam. He lost to Jalen Turner, but he did beat Jim Miller, who had been winning more as of late. Now, he called out Patty Pimblett for a fight in his post-fight interview, and that's where I think the UFC should go and is going to go. Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblett. Bunch of shit talk leading up to this one. This will be a super fun fight. I think that Bobby Green will give Patty Pimblett a very tough test on the ground, and the buildup for this fight will allow Patty Pimblett to build his star a little bit more because the UFC wants to build him up. And a win over Patty Pimblett for Bobby Green would allow him to start working his way back the other direction in the rankings. But this is the fight that the UFC should make for Bobby Green is Patty Pimblett, probably in uh, Manchester in July. And then moving down the card from there, opening the card, Davison Figueredo defeated Cody Garbrandt by submission. I had Figueredo by KO, given Cody's lack of a chin recently. But I believe that... Davison Figueredo looked amazing. He looked good on the feet. He looked good on the ground. And I think that a very, very exciting matchup for Davison Figueredo is going to be Peter Yan. I want to see this matchup between two very fast, very athletic, very talented bantamweights and two former champions, former flyweight champion and former bantamweight champion. I think that the UFC should make Davison Figueredo versus Peter Yan sometime later this year because Peter Jan's going to need some time to come back given that he tore his ACL or MCL at UFC 299. So as you guys can see here, this is what I have for the main card matchups. This is for the big fight losers. And this is for the prelim winners. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts down below. Who do you want to see the UFC 300 fighters matched up with going forward? I want to hear your thoughts down below. If you like this video and you want more content just like this, click that subscribe button down below. If you want more content from me, go check out my weekly comedy podcast, The Hissy Fit Podcast, and go check out my personal channel, Wyatt's World. Go watch this suggested video, and I'll see you next time.